Now, I recently got a chance to check out one of my favorite two-in-one detachables, the Dell Latitude 7420 detachable that I thought might be one of the best two-in-ones to give the Surface Pro 7 Plus a run for its money. And so far, that's been living up to the bill. My 30-day review of that two-in-one detachable will be debuting this week. But in the meantime, I got a chance to check out a two-in-one convertible also in Dell's Latitude line that really has blown me away. And that's the one we're gonna take a look at today. It's the Dell Latitude 9420 two-in-one, a two-in-one convertible with a 16 to 10 aspect ratio in terms of the display, QHD plus resolution, absolutely gorgeous, pen support, running the 11th gen Tiger Lake processor. It's the Core i7-1185G7. You got 16 gigabytes of RAM in my review unit, but you can get it with up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. And it really has a premium feel and look. We're gonna take a look at it today to let you know what I think about it. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Dell Latitude 9420 2-in-1, here for 2021, coming up. Now, as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Dell. I'm not being sponsored by Dell. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Dell is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this review unit was provided by Dell, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, pricing starts at a very hefty $2,039, and my unit, as configured, is $2,919.75, and that is very expensive, but don't forget, this is a commercial convertible laptop geared towards businesses who tend to buy them in bulk, and they will receive discounts from Dell. But having said that, Dell does run a lot of sales, so don't be scared off by this initial price. Eventually, these come down in price, and you will be able to get some pretty steep discounts if history is any indication. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. So let's open it up. Now, packaging is actually really premium, but at this price point, we'd expect nothing less. Very similar to the XPS line and their consumer line. That's been pretty good. Lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself, and we're going to get to that in just a moment, but let's find out what else you get inside the box. Now, Dell sent me the 90-watt USB-C power adapter. You can also get it with a 65-watt power adapter, but the extra wattage will help with faster charging, so I'm glad they included that in the box. Now, holding the unit for the first time, I am really impressed with the build quality of this all-metal design. It's really super rock solid. It is very premium and high-end. Now, 3.2 pounds or 1.4 kilograms, definitely light enough to take with you on the go. So it's a portable device, which you're going to need when you're on the road on a business trip or the like. Okay, let's check out the port selection. We're going to start off on the left side. We get a Kensington lock port, an HDMI 2.0 port, Two Thunderbolt 4 ports that do data charge, display out. They're also USB-C 4 ports as well. And of course, you get a micro SD card slot and a 3.5 millimeter headset jack to round out everything on the left side. Moving over to the right side, you get one USB 3.2 type A port. Now, if you do opt to get the optional wireless WAN, you also have a SIM slot to put the SIM card, of course, if you're going to go with the 5G slash 4G LTE. Now, to get inside this laptop, all you need to do is remove the Phillips head screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. Now, once inside, you'll notice the 59.6 watt-hour battery, or what they like to term 60 watt-hours, they round it up, and got pretty good battery life. We're going to get to that in just a little bit. Now, as far as the SSD, that is user-upgradable, but it is the smaller M.2 2230 SSD slot, so that means you cannot put the bigger M.2 2280 drives that we normally see, so keep that in mind. Although the reads and writes that you do get with the included SSD did very well, as you can see here. Now, next to that is the slot for the optional wireless WAN. Now, I did ask Dell if you can actually put in another SSD in that slot, and they said no. It's only for the wireless WAN. That's a little bit unfortunate. Now, speaking of the wireless WAN, it is an option, as I mentioned. You will have to pay extra for it. But if you're that business traveler, definitely something to invest in because having the always-on connection wherever you are, especially when you're on a business trip, is a great boon to productivity, and I highly recommend it. 
Now, unfortunately, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade it, but you can get this outfitted with up to 32 gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM. My unit has 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM. And just like the RAM, the Wi-Fi card is also soldered in. That means you cannot upgrade it down the road. And that's thanks to the Wi-Fi 6E that it has, along with the Bluetooth 5.2 combo. It's all working well. Okay, let's talk about the display. And what we're looking at here is a 14-inch QHD Plus display. It has a resolution of 2560 by 1600. That means this has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, which I like because you'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. You'll see more on the display, making it better for spreadsheets, making it better for Word documents and the like. It has really deep blacks, good white points, excellent contrast, and it has a very low Delta E score of 1.13. That means this is a color accurate display. It also covers the color gamut really well. 100% sRGB, 77% Adobe RGB, 79% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and 72% NTSC. That means this is going to be a good choice for content creators to do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. Now, Dell claims this display will get as bright as 500 nits. I measured 489 nits, pretty close to the claimed 500 nits, making this a good choice for both indoor and outdoor use. I like how bright this display gets. And I also like the aesthetic looks of this display with its really thin bezels, especially for a two-in-one convertible. Normally, we see a more pronounced chin. I think the chin on this is actually pretty slim, giving it, again, a nice, sleek, and modern look. So this is the front-facing camera on the brand-new Dell Latitude 9420 2-in-1 here for 2021, a commercial 2-in-1 convertible that I'm really, really liking. You'll see in this review, of course, exactly why I like it. What we're looking at here, though, is a 720p webcam, not a 1080p or a higher. I uh, kind of wish it was. Uh, but what do you think about the video quality? This is 720p, not 1080p, like I said. And what do you think about the audio quality of the internal microphones? Uh, I am curious to know. Let me know in that comment section below. And I like the fact that it has a dedicated key to turn off the camera when not in use to give you more security and privacy. That's always pretty good. And the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner, another way to log in with Windows Hello. It worked fast. It was pretty responsive as well. Good job on that front. And this being a two-in-one convertible means you can put this into the different modes. As you see here, it's in the tent mode, which is great for recipes in the kitchen, doing media such as Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube. The same goes for the stand mode. And of course, you could always put it into the tablet mode, which is great for use with the pen. Now, I didn't get the pen along with my review unit, but I did have the pen from the Dell Latitude 7420 detachable, and it worked fine using the Wacom AES technology. Great for taking notes, great for sketching an artwork. But of course, they have the bigger style pen, if you want to choose that, you will have to pay extra, as I mentioned. And for those wondering, no, you can't open the lid with one finger. You need to use two hands. The hinge is just too sturdy, too stiff, which is pretty typical of any two-in-one convertible. But nonetheless, once you do open the lid, you are greeted by the keyboard. And I am super impressed with this keyboard. Very comfortable to type on. Good tactile feedback, good key travel. Very comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. And it also has a multi-stage backlight, which allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. And that worked well. And it has a glass precision touchpad that was super responsive. Two finger scrolling is buttery smooth and all the gestures work as you'd expect. Really good job on that front. No complaints at all. The Latitude 9422-in-1 sports a 60 watt hour battery and it did 12 hours and 16 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. So you're looking at anywhere from 9 to 10 hours in real world mixed usage, of course, which is actually pretty good. Now this does have that low power display and that certainly helps when it comes to battery life. But of course, your mileage may vary depending on what you're doing with this laptop. So please keep that in mind. And Dell did supply us with the 90 watt power adapter, which took about 90 minutes to give you a full charge. And that's actually pretty good. Nice and fast. Now, the review unit that Dell sent over has the Core i7-1185G7, which is, of course, an 11th gen processor from Intel. It's the Tiger Lake processor with the integrated Iris Xe graphics, along with 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM. And as you can see from the benchmarks, definitely very respectable numbers. You can definitely do a lot with this in terms of productivity, doing Microsoft Office, email, web browsing. It all worked fine. You could even do video editing. I would only do 1080p video editing since it doesn't have 
have a discrete GPU, but impressive numbers nonetheless with those Iris XE graphics. And I was able to play games on this as well, as long as you lower the settings. I found that to be 1080p low settings to be the sweet spot. You can get playable frame rates on the more popular titles, which are 3, Dota 2 Reborn, GTA 5, you get my drift. Now this has a single fan for cooling and when I ran the Prime 95 stress test I noticed the CPU would turbo boost to 4 gigahertz for about 5 seconds and reach a core temperature of 100 degrees Celsius and then it would drop down to anywhere between 1.8 and 3.1 gigahertz to maintain a cooler 73 degrees Celsius so you will notice some thermal throttling under heavy load. But I didn't notice the surface temperatures getting overly hot, although you will notice on the bottom it got up to 48 degrees Celsius under heavy load, but nothing too outrageous. Now, one of the biggest surprises that I found with this laptop is just how good the audio is, and that's thanks to the four speakers that it has, the two top firing and two downward firing speakers to give you a really nice rich sound. I thought the volume was good, nice and loud, and it fills up the room rather nicely. It was good mids, and there was some bass. Actually, one of the better business-focused laptops when it comes to audio. I was super impressed with this. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Dell Latitude 9420 2-in-1 here for 2021? And I gotta say, I am super impressed with this laptop. I like the fact that they did move to a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. I like that QHD plus resolution on that display. It was sharp, it was crisp, it was really great. Throw in a really comfortable keyboard and touchpad, very good battery life thanks to that low power display. The optional wireless WAN, which is great, especially if you're the business traveler on the go. The improved quad speakers really blew me away and surprised the heck out of me. Didn't expect such good speakers on a two-in-one convertible geared towards business users. I like the automatic camera shutter, although I'm not crazy about that 720p webcam. It throttles under heavy load, so please keep that in mind, but not unusual for a thin and light convertible. It supports M.2 2230 SSDs only, not the larger 2280s. RAM and wireless LAN are not user upgradable, which of course is a negative. The other negative that I noticed that I didn't mention when we were looking at the keyboard is that there's no more dedicated page up and page down keys. You now have to use a function key to get that functionality. And you know what? This is expensive, although businesses won't blink an eye when they're buying these things. They're looking for quality. They're looking for this to be the one that can be good for the job at hand. And they will get discounts from Dell since they do tend to buy these in bulk. So bear that in mind. Now, keep in mind, Dell does run a lot of sales as well. Now, I'm going to give this a really good score. It's a 94 making this an excellent choice if you're in the market for a two-in-one business convertible that has optional 5G to take with you on the road. It's thin, it's light, it's everything that it needs to be. And I'm gonna give this a definite recommend. So what do you think about this bad boy, the 9422 in one uh, convertible? It's not a detachable, it's a convertible. You could also get this in the traditional clamshell design, but I like the versatility that this two-in-one convertible brings to the table. Really nice industrial design with this brushed metal finish, a really premium look. All metal design is absolutely rock solid. The build construction on this is first rate, and I expect nothing less at this price point and from Dell's Latitude line. Now, I really like that QHD Plus display. It's got really good colors, good coverage of the color gamut, getting close to that 500 nits claimed. And I got to say, it is a beautiful display. I like the pen support on this, good battery life. You're looking at over 12 hours on my continuous web surfing test, anywhere from nine to 10 hours, of course, depending on what you're doing in real world mixed usage. Good performance out of that Core i7 1185G7, integrated Iris XE graphics, all performed well. You saw the numbers. Not cheap with a starting price over $2,000, but then again, business focused convertibles do tend to skew higher but Dell does run a lot of sales and keep in mind also that if you're a business buying these in bulk you probably will get a nice discount from Dell because you're buying in bulk but I'm curious to know what you think let me know in the comment section below so please hit the like button please subscribe please share this video don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below let me know how I'm doing let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.